bring. I know what tomorrow's going to bring for you. Uh, just out of this very church here, we've buried an 18-year-old man, and we've buried an 80-something-year-old man. We've buried him from 18 to 80-something. So I never know what the Lord's going to do in your life, and you only have so many days. And when those days are done and your number's pulled, that's it. There's nothing nobody can do. The doctor can't do nothing for you. Your mom and dad can't do nothing for you. I can't do nothing for you. You don't stand before God on your own merit. And you better, I pray, you be better be praying, uh, uh, standing with Jesus Christ. Because be just standing up there by yourself. Ooh-wee. I know I couldn't do it. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 27. Speaking to Jesus Christ, we're going to see what he has to say this morning about some things. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to start there in verse 27. Matthew chapter 6, verse 27. He says here, the Lord says, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? That would be your clothes. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whither all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray to you humbly, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will move, lead us, guide us this morning, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that, Lord, you're welcome in here, Lord. We pray you come in, Lord God, sit with us, Father. I pray, Lord, that uh, as we look at your word, Lord God, and as we preach your word, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts to the truth. And Lord, I pray, Father, a blessing on everybody that's in here this morning, Lord God. I pray, Father, that they came in here looking to hear from you, Lord. They want to hear from you. They want to be fed from you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, you would honor that and feed them. And Lord, I pray and thank you, Lord, for these Christians, Lord, that, that love you. And come out to your house, Lord God, to, to hear from you, Lord, to sing praises to you, Lord. And we do pray, Lord Jesus, that you would come back quickly. In Jesus Christ, holy name I pray. Amen. So go back at verse 34. So he says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow, the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. I want to preach this morning on one thing at a time. One thing, one thing at a time. Because he says there, Take thought for the things of itself. The Lord teaches us to take it one day at a time, one thing at a time. The Lord wants us to live in today. He doesn't want us living in tomorrow. He doesn't want us living in next week or next month or next year. The Lord wants us living in the very day we're living in today. He wants us to wake up and he wants us to live this day to the fullest we can. And the reason why I believe he wants us to live that way is because nobody has tomorrow promised to you. And, uh, you know, the older I get, the more I've seen that. Where I've seen where people, I'll I'll see them one day and the next thing I know... That two days later, I'll say, hey, friend, you hear what happened to so-and-so? I'm like, no, yeah, they passed away. They were in a car wreck or they died of a heart attack. Or, you don't know what's going to happen to you. Nobody knows. And the Lord says here, and he wants to remind them, take therefore no thought for the morrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day. Today is the evil thereof. In other words, it's enough today just to keep yourself in line. Amen. <laughs> It's enough today to keep yourself in line. Now, stick with me because we're going to go through some of these verses. And I'm going to show you this principle all through the Bible where the Lord wants us to slow down, to slow down. He wants us to slow down and take things. He wants us to take things one thing at a time. Just take life one day at a time. Take one step at a time. And not trying to rush ahead like the world's trying to make us do. Look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Because the devil... He's a, he's, a, he's a taskmaster. The devil's a taskmaster. And I'm telling you, he's behind you right now. And he's got his whip out. And he's trying to whip you ahead and whip you ahead and whip you ahead. He's got your mind thinking about what's going to happen next week. What's going to happen next month. What's going to happen next year. What's going to happen in the elections. What's going to happen with my health. What's going to happen at the doctor's visit. What's going to happen with my finances. What's going to happen with my job. And he's got you worrying, worrying, worrying. He's whipping you and he's whipping you. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, just slow down and just enjoy life today. Just enjoy it today. James chapter 4, verse 13. James chapter 4, verse 13. Go to now, ye that say, Today 
Or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanisheth away. Why are you so hurry to get to Lamar? <laughs> Why are you in such a rush to get to Lamar? You're, you're in such a rush to get to the next day. You know, what, you know what the next day means? you got one less day to live. And the next month means you have one less month to live. And the next year means you have one less year to live. You know, I was a young man. I mean, I was just a kid and I'd hear all the old timers say, Man, time sure does fly. And I was, as a kid, you're like, no, nah, man, time don't, what is that? And the older I get and the grayer my beard gets, man, time flies. So it's just April 1st. Now it's the end of April. What, the very last day of April? Just time just flying, flying, flying. And I'm starting to realize that, you know, my life's a vapor. I'm more than halfway through with my life. Some of y'all in here are more than three quarters through with your life. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but hey, let's not worry about tomorrow. Let's not worry about next month. Let's think about today. Let's take care of today. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? Is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanisheth away. Verse 15, for that you ought to say, this is what you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Life is lived in a day, not a morrow. Life is lived in a day, not a morrow. Life is what you do in a day, not what you do in a tomorrow. When you try living in a tomorrow, you're not living a life, you're living a dream. And a lot of people are doing that. They're trying to live in tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, this is going to happen. Tomorrow, my ship will come in. Tomorrow, I'll get more money. Or tomorrow, or next week, or next month. And you forget, you know what? The Lord wants you to live. Just live today. Just slow down. And you know the old saying goes, slow down and smell the roses. You know, I was heading up towards Abilene, going through Cross Plains, and man, they've had a lot of rain up there. The wildfires are beautiful. I mean, the wildflowers are amazing right now. Not just the blue bonnets, I'm talking about just amazing array of colors. And I drove past them doing about 80 miles an hour. Because <laughs> I had to get to going. Had to get there. Had to get there. Had to get there. And, and it, it occurred to me, because I was thinking and meditating on this sermon, thinking about the Lord, what the Lord had been showing me. It's like, man, why am I in such a rush? Why don't I just pull over? And look at these flowers. Because what you know my wife were talking about that. We're like, look at all those different colors. Look at all those, look at all those, look at all those different colors right there. <laughs> like there's some more coming up here. You know. And it's just like it's like the devil's just whipping us. Go, go, go. We can't slow down. We can't slow down. And the Lord wants us to live in a today, not in tomorrow. Live day by day, live life like there might not be a tomorrow. I have that written down in my Bible. You don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. Tell somebody about Jesus Christ today. Do something for the people you love for today. Do something for yourself today. Take time to, take time to spend time with the Lord today. You know, uh, there's a guy, uh, old, uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord. He, he, he used to sing on a piano. His name was Rex Harrison. He's a crippled man, one of my favorite singers of all time, Rex Harrison. Nobody probably here even knows who he is. He was a good man of the Lord. He great singer, man. He used to sing out in Vegas, and then he got saved, and he gave all that up and started singing in the church and started singing for the Lord. But he used to sing a song, and in that song, it always touched my heart. In that song, he says, I don't borrow from tomorrow's sunshine because the clouds may turn to gray. I don't borrow from tomorrow's sunshine for those clouds might turn to gray. Well, what sunshine do you borrow from? Well, today, I borrow from Jesus Christ. My, I live my life for Jesus Christ. So, well, my, my, well, pastor, this morning, my, my life's kind of gray this morning, brother. I'm having trouble with my family. I'm having trouble with my finances. I'm, yeah, we're all having trouble. Everybody's having trouble. Everybody has trouble. Some people just better at having it than others. That's what I found out as a pastor. Everybody has troubles. But some people are just better at having it than others. Well, what do you do then? You just got to rely on Jesus Christ. That's, that's all you can do. What's the answer? Jesus my, 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 there's a storm in my life. What's the answer? Jesus. Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. I know my Lord Jesus Christ, when the storms came in, the disciples said, we're going to perish, we're going to perish. The Lord said, oh, ye of little faith. And he stood up and said, be ye calm. And the storms just, and the waves. That's my Jesus. And that's the Jesus I'm trying to present to you. I'm not trying to present to you a Jesus that's a philosophy. 
or an idea or some thought or some far away. I'm trying to present to you Jesus Christ that wants to live with you today. Not tomorrow. He wants to live with you today. He wants to do something for you today. Look at Isaiah chapter 28. Look at Isaiah chapter 28. Turn to, the, turn to the Old Testament to Isaiah 28. This is a principle that runs all through your Bible. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. This is a principle that runs all through our Bible where we need to live life one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Just take it one thing at a time. Um, I was in this class recently. It was... Uh, actually a drug class, and uh, the, the city sent me to it. And while I was in this class sitting there, the, the teacher was saying, and he's a pretty smart old guy. He, he was in the Texas legislator, and he was saying, he goes, you know what? The word, people say they're multitaskers. He says, that's a lie. Nobody can multitask. He said, the science proves it. You can't multitask. You, you're always, always just doing one thing at a time. Now, you might have this thing going and that thing going, but you only can focus on one thing at a time. And his point was is that we, we get to thinking when we're driving our vehicles that we're, we're multitasking. But really, when you pick up your phone and you're on your phone, you're, you're not multitasking. You're focusing on who you're talking to and your mind is... The point is, is we, sometimes we need to slow down and just take it one thing at a time, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Because we're so worried, trying to get ahead, trying to rush, trying to rush. Look at verse 9, Isaiah chapter 28, verse, verse 9. Here's what the Lord says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Doctrine would be religious teaching. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. He said those that have grown up. That's what he's saying there. But look at verse 10. Here's the principle. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That's the... That's the theme of the Bible there. That's a, taking it one step at a time, taking it one thing at a time, that precept here a little, there a little, one little thing after another little thing. That's how life works. That's how God wants your life to work. God doesn't want you to take things in big chunks. God doesn't intend for you to take things in big chunks. He doesn't intend for you to be worrying about things that are coming up in the future. He says, just take it one thing at a time. Just deal with it one thing at a time, one little thing at a time. Line upon line, here a little, there a little. Not a big thing. Not, it doesn't say here a big thing and here there a big thing. It's here a little, there a little. And the Lord says, you know, you're worrying about tomorrow and today. You need to be worrying about today. Don't be worried about tomorrow. The Lord's going to take care of your, your, your food. He's going to take care of your clothes. He's, took, he's taking care of the animals out in the field. Don't stop worrying about so much stuff and just worry about today and to worry about the little things and do that little thing that the Lord's got for you to do. Day by day is how the Lord has us designed to live. The thing to do is never some far away thing, but it's always right at hand. That's what I have written down here. The thing to do is not some far away thing, it's always something right at hand. See, I think one of the greatest tricks that the devil does to Christians is that the devil tries to put some, some far away idea way out there to where we're going to try to shoot for that. We're going to try to do this. We're going to try to do that. And the Lord says, I got this little thing, this little thing I want you to do. Um, some people are looking for God in all the big things. They always look for God in all the big things. And you'll find God in all the little things. And God uses little things. You know that when Samson was fighting a, thou a thousand Philistines, you know what he killed them with? The little jawbone of an ass. Whenever the Lord was going to feed 5,000 people, you know what he did? He used a little boy with 12 loaves of bread and just a couple of fishes. Just a little boy. The point is, is that it's the little things that the Lord uses. And he wants us to go through those little things. And it's little by little. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. It's just little things. And they're adding up. Little things. And they're adding up. I was reading about a guy that was looking for God. He wanted a revelation from God. So he got on an airplane. He flew over to Israel. He was going all through Israel. He was looking for God in all different ways. And he just didn't feel like he was finding God like he wanted to find God and. One day he was out there and he was out in the wilderness, out in the desert area, and he looked down and there was a flower and he picked up that flower and he got to looking at that flower and then something happened in his heart. He got to looking at the design of that flower and the and incredible beauty of that flower and he got to looking at, and the closer he got to putting his eye to that flower, the design that God had put in that flower and he could literally felt like, he felt like in his heart, he could literally see the fingerprint of God and it changed his heart right there. 
And he got back on the plane and he flew back home. And when he got back home, he was so excited. He got back home and he's walking up to his doorstep. He looked down before he opened up his door and there was that very flower that he had found in Israel. And he realized, I went all that way looking for God and God was here in the little things right here at my doorstep. Sometimes we get caught up in trying to get something big going. Let's get more people in here. Let's get the bigger thing. Let's get this bigger, bigger thing. And God works in little things. And he works, in little, he works in little people. He works in little ideas. He works in little things you're doing. Guys, I, I've said little things to people that, have, that people have said, man, brother, when you said that, I don't remember what I said. It was some little something I said. People have said something to me. That, and I'll say, you remember when you said that to me? It meant so much to me. And they'll look at me and say, no, I don't remember saying that. Yeah, it was some little thing. I needed it. At some little thing I needed. Uh, but Brother Chad Reese, when I was going through some of the darkest moments in my life, I called him up. We were talking, and my brother, I don't know what the answer is. I was trying to look for the answers and all these big things, and he said, Brother, let me tell you something. What you need to do is simply this. You just need to fall back in love with Jesus. Just fall back in love with Jesus. <laughs> That's such a little thing. Profound. Profound to be told by the brother. He didn't even, he doesn't even remember saying that to me. It, I, I've mentioned that story from this pulpit many, many, many times. And when Brother Chad came in, I was talking to Brother Chad and we were talking. I was sitting around and said, hey, brother, you remember you told me blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, brother, not really. I don't remember it. A little thing he said, he said just, just fall back in love with Jesus. But it was that little thing. And that's how God works. Here, little, there, little. Line upon line. Here, there, little, there. We try to look at life with this too long a view. We try to look at life in the long view with this long eyes, like in years and, and decades and in a month I'm going to do this and in years I'm going to do that. We try to look in our lives like that and God doesn't necessarily intend for us to look at life like that. He tends to look at life day by day, little things, taking one thing at a time. Now, I understand what the Bible says that without a vision the people perish. We've got to have a vision. We've got to know, hey, this church represents Jesus. Let's get the word out for Jesus. But in that vision of getting the word out and getting the people saved and getting, telling the world about Jesus Christ, we don't need to forget the little things. Because it's in the little things that God works. We want things to be completed so fast. We want to do big things in a single day. We want to do big things in a single day. We want things to be completed so fast we want to skip over the little things. But when you look at this church, brothers and sisters, and we're sitting in these pews, everything you see in this church started out with a little thing. It's a little lumber. This board was put on this board with this nail was put on this nail, one nail at a time, one board at a time, and then it was built up, and then it was, that's how it works. When Brother Wade comes up here and he plays the piano, he's playing the piano one note at a time, and he's putting those notes, and he puts those notes in their proper order, in their proper place. Things go in their proper order, in their proper place. We don't need to get them out of place. They go in the proper place. We put things where they're supposed to go. But it's one thing upon a thing upon another little thing. It's never the big things. One little thing. After. Do you realize when you look at like the Empire State Building, one of the biggest buildings in the world, it started with one brick and then another brick. and then an, It's the little things, brothers and sisters. God works that way. For precept must be upon precept. It's just one thing is built upon another little thing. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. But we want it in big chunks. And that's a mistake. We want it all in big chunks. And guys, I'm here to tell you, and you won't believe me, but maybe you will. You don't want to know what God has in your future. You don't want to know. Now we know as Christians that in our future, in the end, it's heaven waiting for us. Praise God. I can't wait for heaven. We know that. But I'm talking about, you might not want to know what God's got for you next week. You know, Brother Adams, he's sitting here, God, God bless him. He, Brother Adams is sitting here. One week he's down here. He's praising God. We're in the church together. I'm shaking his hands. I'm driving off. I see him at the edge of his porch. And by, five, by, by the time that week was ended, I think he was up there in the hospital at Arlington having open heart surgery. Don't know if he's going to live. Just like that. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. You need to be worried about today and live life today. And I think your daughter was down at the time, brother. Your daughter was down visiting you at the time. Praise God. You see how God was working that. He's working that in your life and getting your daughter down here. The point is, is that you better enjoy it. 
You better enjoy today. Because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring or next week or next month. And sometimes we're like, I wish God, and you pray, I wish God would show me what's going to happen. I wish God would show me. Well, I don't want God to show me. Because see, whenever, if you would have told me back in 2005 that, okay, so what's going to happen, Keegan, is I'm going to put you at this little place called the Indian Gap. Where's the Indian Gap? And you're going to go out there, and there's going to be like two people out there. Okay, okay. And then what you're going to, and you're going to be out there for 16 years, and you're going to drive 40 minutes one way. You know what I did? I'd say, Good, goodbye, Lord, and just, ah! I would have just ran and jumped off a building. You can't handle what God does to you. You, go, you don't want to know those things. But it's little things. You go, this little thing happened, and then this little thing happened, and then this little thing happened, and then this little thing, and then day, and then this day happened, and then that day happened. And then you look back, and you're like, well, look what's, what God's been doing here. But it didn't all happen in a day. This big thing don't happen in a day. Big things like that don't happen in a day. It's little things, brothers and sisters. It's that little thing. We need to take it one little thing at a time. One little thing at a time. Look at Psalms chapter 119. Psalms 119. You know, one of the biggest mistakes Christians make, and I see this all the time, all the time. Psalms 119 verse 105. I see this all the stinking time is we try to shove weeks and months and sometimes some people try to shove years into one day. <laughs> they try to shove all this work into one day, into one week. All, all this weeks, all these months, we try to shove all this stuff into one day. Who gives you that idea? Who gives you that idea? It isn't the Lord Jesus Christ gives you the idea. The Lord Jesus Christ works slowly. One time, one thing at a time. That's how the Lord works. Anybody in here, anybody in here been impatient with the Lord before? Amen. Amen. I don't know, my ministry of being a pastor, I don't know how many people I have dealt with, they're like, I don't know why the Lord's not doing it. I don't know why the Lord's not, I why the wait. I'm, I'm tired of waiting on the Lord. I'm tired of waiting on the Lord. I'm tired of waiting on the Lord. That's exactly. The Lord is just a slow work. He's a slow work. He's a slow work. You put every, you, you farmers in here, y'all plant your seed. Does it come up the next day? Does it come up the same day? It's a slow work. It's day by day. It's little by little. It's just little. That's how the Lord works. He doesn't work fast. I'm here to tell you, this philosophy, this, this, this idea in America that you're, trying, you're, you're in a rat race. They're just pushing you. It's the devil. He's behind you. He's pushing you. He's pushing you to be faster. He's pushing you to do things quicker. He's pushing you not to slow. And, and the Lord's trying to slow you. Pull your reins back and slow you down. Say, man, slow down. Enjoy life. Smell the roses. Enjoy your family. Sit down around the table and talk to your wife and kids. Enjoy yourself. Stop trying to rush ahead, trying to rush and trying to shove all this stuff into one day. You're trying to shove all these things into one day. And there's no reason why so many people are dealing with anxiety and fear and depression. Brothers and sisters, God did not design you mentally or physically to do that. He designed you to do things per day. And he also designed you, once you get six of those days together, he says, I want you to rest. He's designed you for rest. But the world is, go, 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 go. And we'll leave out of here. And there's people that worked all through the week, and they're working Sunday today. And they'll work seven days a week, work seven days a week. And, that's, and we're just push and push. It, you know, I'm not that old. I remember when there were blue laws in the state of Texas. You couldn't go buy stuff on Sunday. There were things, you couldn't go, to, there were play, all the places were shut down on Sunday. I remember that. But now you go, almost everything's opened up on Sunday. People playing baseball on Sunday, soccer on Sunday. You know, there's no, it's always just go, 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 go. The Lord never designed you for that. Listen, there is no way you can carry a year's worth of sorrow and worries on your shoulder. God never intended you to be that way. He never intended you to carry a year's worth, a week's worth, a month's worth of sorrows on your shoulder. But God did design you to be able to carry that in one day. Anybody, the weakest shoulder in here can carry something, their sorrow, their problems on their shoulder for just one day. 
You know what happens when you get through that one day? You go through another day. One day at a time. Do we not sing the song? One day at a time, sweet Jesus. But we want to take it one week at a time, one month at a time. We try to shove all that in there. Look at Psalms 119, 105. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now notice I'm showing you these verses. These are not some strange, obscure verses that you can't find in the Bible. These are famous verses, especially Psalms 119, 105. This is a famous verse of the Bible. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The law, the law of divine guidance is step by step. The law of divine guidance is step by step. Notice. Thy word is a lamp, not a blazing sun, not a spotlight. So the, the word of God, thy word is a lamp on my feet and a light on my path. It's a lamp, and that lamp, is, you're holding that lamp up, and it's giving you enough to take another step and another step and another step and another step. You, that's what the word of God does. That's what the Lord intends for you, just enough to see a step in front of you. It's not a blazing sun where you can see way off ahead of you. You know what's coming. You know what God's got intended for you. You don't know. And I can't tell you. And I've had brothers and sisters come to me and say, I want the Lord, I want you to help pray with me that the Lord will tell me what's coming and tell me what i got to do. And I, I can't tell you that. I don't know if the Lord's even going to tell you that. You know, John Barbie, uh, he lives down here in Dublin. One time we were talking about he needed some money. He had to pay, some, he had to pay something. He needed some money. Man, he prayed for that money. He prayed for that money. He looked everywhere. He, he's waiting for God to give him that money. He felt like he needed that money. He prayed for that money. It wasn't a whole lot of money, but he needed that money. And he finally, he said, he said one day, Brother Keegan, he goes, I got down on my knees, and he said, I was crying out. And he said, I had tears rolling down my cheeks. He said, Lord God, he said, I've looked under every rock for that money. I've looked under every rock. I've turned over every rock. He said in a sweet, small voice, he heard the Lord say, John, I haven't made that rock. I haven't made that rock yet. What was the Lord telling him? I'm not ready to give that to you. Sometimes we, we want something. We want the Lord to do something. We want the Lord to move something. And the Lord said, no, no, I'm not ready to do that. This isn't the day. Live for today, today. Don't worry about it. Tomorrow. Man, that's all, guys, I, I, we don't have time to, for me to show you in the Bible. Do you not remember when they were, they were in that, they were in that, they were surrounded by the enemies, of, the, 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 the people of Israel were surrounded by the enemies of God, and that there was nothing to eat, and the people in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the castle, in the walls, they had nothing to eat, and they were, they were eating like cow's dung, and all this is nasty, they had nothing to eat, they were completely, uh, Without any kind of food, and a prophet showed up and said, God told me that by tomorrow, you're going to have all the food you want, and everything, it, all the food you want will be worth a penny. It's, it's going to be amazing. And one of the guys there said, there's no way God could do that. I can't believe it. There's no way. If, if, he said, if God was to open up the windows of heaven, that's not going to happen. Well, what happened was, in the middle of the night, God sent a disturbance in the, enemy, in the enemy's camp. And the enemy thought that the Israel was on them and they started fighting each other and they ran and they ran away and they, they killed some of each other and they ran away and there was these two, two drunks, leopards, they stumbled out there and they said, we might as well go out there to the enemy and let them kill us because we're going to starve to death. And they go out there and where's everybody at? They got to looking around, they couldn't find nobody and they found all this food and it, so they went back and they said, hey, the enemy's left, something happens, God's done something, there, there's no enemy out there but it's all this food and all this, this money and gold and their, their tent stuff, they just ran away. And the king said, I don't believe it. And they went out. Sure enough, that's what was happening. And in one day, all the people ran out that gate to go get that food. And that prophet that said, hey, that'll never happen. Even if God opens windows of heaven, the Bible said he was stomped to death. So all kinds of stories where it looks like it's impossible for God to work. And then the next day, it happens. I've had, it's happening all through this church over the years. I've seen it where Brother King and I don't see how there's no way God could do anything. Hey, man, just, I, it might not be today. You might not see it today. But guess what, brothers and sisters? There is a tomorrow. And there's a next week. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, you can't live tomorrow, can you? you, can, you can you live in the next week? No. What you can do and what Jesus tells you to do is live in today. Let the Lord worry about tomorrow. 
He owns tomorrow, amen? He owns next week. The Lord owns next year. You just live today, because that's what the Lord's designed you to do, to live in a day. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, that lamp would, that lamp would come down and show you the steps you take. You take it step by step. Now, you can, it says, he says there, he says, and a light unto my path. You could lift that lamp up. And you might be able to see kind of a distance there. But if you're going to keep on moving, you're going to need to bring that lamp down and take it step by step. That's the way that God's designed it. That's exactly how God's designed it. You know, we can't handle it if God was to show us what was coming down our path. And I'm glad he doesn't. He said, well, what, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And it's the same, th it's a famous saying, we will cross that bridge when we get there. Amen? We will cross that bridge when we get there. Well, well, tomorrow, what happens if tomorrow, or what happens next month, or what happens next week when I can't pay my bills, or what happens, if, we'll get, cross that bridge when we get there today, just living today. And this is what John Barbie had to find out. He had to find out that, hey, I'm worried about this money and I've got to pay this bill. And the Lord's telling me, you just live for today. I, I, I've got it took care of. And you know what happened? In the end, he got the money he needed. It showed up and he was able to pay that bill. Everything worked out. And he was laughing about it. But he wasn't laughing about it when he was crying to God, was he? Listen, guys, I'm not trying to make fun or trying to make light of whatever problem you're dealing with today. I'm here to tell you that there's a tomorrow coming. And you can't, you can't change tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow's coming. It might be a brighter tomorrow. I don't know. But just live in today. That's the way that the Lord's designed us to live in a day. The thing to do is always right next in our, is our next step. Just take the next step. Take the next step. Take the next step. Let me close by saying this. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall, followeth me shall not walk in darkness. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. So sometimes what happens is we're following Jesus Christ and sometimes we, we get tired of the slow pace that the Lord goes because the Lord goes at a slow pace, amen. And so we try to run ahead. And we try to run ahead of the Lord. And if you run ahead of the Lord, you're going to run into darkness. And if you are like some people do, that they have a thing the Lord wants them to do that day, and they're like, well, I'll do it tomorrow, or I'll do it next week. Uh, and the Lord says, no, I want you to do that today. And he said, well, I'll do it tomorrow. And what you're doing is the Lord, you're not following the Lord, and you're kind of following behind, you're following behind, you're following behind. And he's getting ahead, and now you're getting back into darkness. The best advice I can tell you is just continue your walk with Jesus day by day. Wake up in the morning thinking about Jesus, pray to Jesus, read some of his words, read his book, think about him during the day, and just live this day for Jesus Christ because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. One thing at a time, one day at a time. Enjoy the day God has given it to you. Amen. Enjoy the day God's given it to you. He might not, he might not give you tomorrow. I wish I could promise you tomorrow. I wish I could tell you, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Now, sometimes I do. I'll say, I'll see you next week, brother. I'll see you next Wednesday. I'll see you next Sunday. And I tell y'all, some of y'all that. And I've told brothers and sisters in this church, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you next week. And I never see them again. And I'm not going to see them again until they get to the other side of heaven. I know Brother Raymond Music. God bless Brother Raymond Music. I miss it, old soul. They, he, he fought, he was 80-something years old. He fought and fought and fought not to be put in a nursing home. Y'all remember that? You're not going to put me in no nursing home. You're not going to put me in no nursing home. I, I don't want to be in no nursing home. He, he didn't want to be in a nursing home. And finally, he got, his health got so bad, they put him in a nursing home. So I had to go see him. And sure enough, he wasn't happy. I remember him sitting there, oh, I don't like this and everything. He's sitting in the nurse. We went to visit him, my wife and I, and some few of us others were up there. Went to visit him. We were in the room with him. We, we, he was in good spirits. His, his daughter was there. We got on my knees. We prayed over him. So, all right, brother, love you, brother Raymond. We'll see you later. And then we walked out the room. We got in the car. We drove off. I, I don't know. We were gone like 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. His daughter called me crying and said, Dad just passed away. I'm like, what? Yeah, he just started having trouble breathing. And then the Lord took him. I thought I would want to see him tomorrow. You know what the Lord did? The Lord says, Raymond, I'm not going to leave you in a nursing home. Come on with me. Come on. Let's go home. And this took him on home. I don't know what the Lord's got planned for you, but I do know the Lord's given you this day because I'm seeing you here. Amen. And if I can give you any good advice in closing, give this day to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this day, Lord. You've given us the health to get out of bed, Lord God. we got some brothers and sisters, Lord, that don't have the good health this morning, Lord. We pray for their healing. Lord, wherever they might be, Lord God, that you'd be with them, Lord God. Heal them up, Lord, to get them off the bed of affliction, Lord God.